Coming into this class, I had no idea what to expect. I walked in the first day and Jody was talking about white space versus non-white space and the color line and white privilege. And to be honest, I had no idea what white privilege was, even though I am white and I didn't have that privilege. And after reading and having class discussions, I realized that that was me. I grew up with white privilege and had no idea that I was even growing up like that. You know, I grew up in a upper class white family and went to great schools and had every opportunity that I've ever wanted or needed in my lifetime. And knowing, kind of being oblivious to the fact that other people didn't have that. I know that people are less fortunate and that I was, I appreciated how fortunate I was. But I, I strictly thought it was because I worked hard. And I, I didn't know that I had a little bit of an advantage over other people in the United States. I didn't know I had an advantage over black people, Mexican people, other races. So that was a little bit of a shock to me, talking in class. I think that some things that people said offended me. And I kind of needed to hear that. <laughs> I At first, I was really uncomfortable. And I couldn't sit still in class. And I felt like people were attacking me because I, not just me, but t attacking all white people in general. And I'm sure that things that I said offended other people. And I think it's just because we've all come from different places in our lives. We grew up in different cities. We grew up in different cultures, in different skin. Um, and that was, a, that was a little bit of a mind opener for me. And I think I really needed that. I think it was really great. And, you know, I grew up, started growing up in Seattle. And Seattle is mostly uh, Asian and white people. And so when I moved to California in middle school, that was the first time that I have ever noticed race because it wasn't just white and Asian people. It was white Asians, a lot of Mexicans, there was Indians, there was more black people than I was used to. And that, not that I was judgmental of those people, it was just different and it was the first time Jody asked us in class, when was the first time you ever realized race? And I think that was my first time. It was just a little bit of a change. And that's why I, I noticed it. Um, where I'm from, I don't see much of a color line as much as maybe the panels we're talking about. You know, um, I went to school with, my school was mostly Mexicans. I, there was a lot of white people, of course. Um, there was, a, it was, everyone hung out together. Everyone, there was white people in poor schools. There was Mexicans and blacks in rich schools. It was completely intermingled. And I'm sure there was a little bit of um, a division there. It just wasn't as obvious. And so when our basketball coach was talking about how she grew up in a black neighborhood and they went to a black school and then on the other side, there was a white neighborhood and there was a white school. And it was very obvious about the segregation. That was different for me. And it brought me back to Colorado. I went to Colorado um, my freshman year of college at a, in a small town in Colorado. And that was a culture shock for me. I didn't know that America still was racist to this extent. I have heard someone say that black people and white people should not be in the same classrooms as each other. That was completely inappropriate to me. That was just, I, I was mind blown. I walked past this conversation and was completely mind blown. And it just made me feel really uncomfortable. I would, it was white people hung out with white people and the Hawaiians hung out with the Hawaiians and the black people hung out with the black people and it was completely segregated. So I would, you know, I, I didn't really know at first. I didn't really get it. I when I when I showed up there, it was just a lot of white people I noticed. And I was just talking to everyone like I always do. And I was talking to a group of black girls. And they were just kind of looking at me like I was crazy. And I didn't know if I maybe interrupted a conversation or it was just a bad time or I was being rude or something or weird or they didn't like me. And I, I realized when my white friend told me that we don't talk to those people that they looked at me because they've never probably interacted with a white person like I have before. And that was so sad to me. And I left that school 
because I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be surrounded with that for four years, let alone scared that it was going to change my mindset because I would have been immersed in it for so long. And I left and I realized in this class, people don't get to leave. I got to leave. I got away from it. I got, people don't get to do that. And I know there's, you know, if, if you were a black person in Colorado, would you live differently than if you were in California? Absolutely. But people don't always have that, that luxury. I can leave and go into white space, any space, and be almost, you know, normal and accepted. And then when a black person comes out every single day and people in our class are talking about how white people would give them bad looks walking down the hall, like... I just don't understand. I, I don't get it. Um, one thing that really stood out to me also in the panel was interracial dating panel um, with the black and white couple and how they said that you know, she was talking about that if a white person did something racist on the news that she couldn't be around her husband because he was like too white and those were like his people that were doing bad things. And that just made me realize like you can be completely accepting of someone and other people's views, other people's actions, they still have an effect on you. No matter if you say, I am not racist, whether you are the most hardcore non-racist person you've ever met, other people's actions still affect how you view the other race. Other people's actions still affected how she viewed her husband. Even if it was for a few minutes, she viewed her husband as a bad person because of other people's opinions. And that just shows you how, how this can just like tumble downhill, go downhill so fast. Um, I used to think that interracial dating would solve racism and discrimination. I think that in a way. I also think that our nation, it starts here. It starts people that are taking this class. It starts people that are studying this, who are understanding, who have heard stories, who have heard stories from all different kinds of races, types of people. It starts with kindness. And I know Jody was talking about how there's always someone in the class that wants to just like everyone be happy. And that's completely me. And I think there's a psychological study that says if you smile, even if you're are depressed, that it ups your mood. Even if you just smile, the act of smiling ups your mood. It changes the chemical wiring in your brain. I think that you fake it until you make it. If, if someone's rude to me, give them a smile. Smile back at them. You know, if someone says something rude to a black person, a transgender person, a um, homosexual person walking down the street and says a rude comment, say something. You know, say it nicely. Say it with kindness. Kill them with kindness. You know, stick up for that person. And as you are kind and you use your words and you encourage other people to be nicer, I think that it wears off. It really does. I think it has an impact. And I think... You stop racism and discrimination by A, checking people around you by their words and their their um, nonverbal cues of black people, of Mexicans, of whatever. And really, really sticking up for other people and just saying, you know, they're a human being. They are just like you. They have struggles. They go to school. They experience death. They experience all these things that you experience, maybe more. <clears throat> and so two, checking yourself, checking yourself when someone walks by you and has a weird hairstyle or does something weird and you're like, okay, weird in your head, Ch check yourself. Okay. You don't know what they've been through or someone cuts you off on the road. You have no idea what they experienced this morning. You have no idea what they're experiencing in their lives. If they don't like white people, cause all they've had was bad white experiences, be a good white experience. Be a good black experience. Be a good experience for them and slowly change their mind and it will slowly change our nation's minds.